Hollywood. The Jack Benny Program. very much ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the show now tonight I'm devoting the entire program to something that I like to do oh once or twice during the year you see tonight we are um isn't that funny look at the way this is the silliest thing look at the way I'm standing <laughs> you see all my pictures are, you know this is a habit that I've got I always stand like this holding my hand for some reason or other. Just a hand. <laughs> of course, when you're doing a show, it doesn't make any difference, you see. But when you're taking a shower, it's ridiculous. <laughs> That's the silliest thing I'll say tonight. But I have so many habits that I've been trying to get rid of. Like, for instance, Every morning at six o'clock in the morning, this is the truth, every morning I wake up at six o'clock, not five after six or ten o'clock, every morning six o'clock I wake up. Then at eight o'clock, every morning I have breakfast, whether, whether I'm not even hungry, and I eat at eight o'clock, just out of habit, you know. Then every morning at ten o'clock I go to the bank. You know. <laughs> one habit I don't want to get rid of. <laughs> and now, now to get on with the show, would you open the curtains, please? <laughs> now, as I said before, tonight we are going to uh, uh, devote this, uh, this half hour to giving new talent a chance to be seen. And my producer tells me if we have a lot of deserving amateurs waiting to come on, I haven't seen them yet, waiting to come on, and he thinks they really should have this opportunity. And then, when you have seen them all, I'm going to ask you to indicate by your applause which one of the acts you like best. See? So, O'Don, you bring out the first contestant. <laughs> Thank uh, This is Mr. Jimmy Cross. Yes. How do you oh. do? How do you do, yes. Mr. Cross? Now, Mr. Cross, I see by this card here that you're a dancer. Yes, sir. Yeah. I've uh, been interested in dancing ever since I was a kid. Mm. I plan to make this my career. Oh, you do? Well, then let me ask you something. <laughs> as um, long as you intend to make this career, I imagine you've studied the styles of the other great dancers. Yes, sir. Now, like, for instance, what do you think of Gene Kelly's dancing? Well, I don't know. Uh, he's all right, but personally, I'd rather dance with my wife. <laughs> Your wife? Of course, Gene Kelly's a little better looking. <laughs> well, I don't... Oh, no, I've never met your wife. You know? Gee, I wish I could say that. Well, listen, we're not here to discuss your domestic problems, see? So let's have your... Let's have your dance. All right. Would you hold these for me, please? Shoes? And, and my socks. <laughs> Shoes and socks. Eh? Well, what kind of a dance are you going to do? A tap dance. <laughs> a tap dance barefoot? Yes, sir. Well, this I've got to see. Go ahead. <laughs> This is amazing. You're barefoot and I could hear all the taps like they were metal. metal. Now, how do you do that? Well, you see, I have a condition called pedophorositis. Pedophorositis? Yeah, that's when the iron in your blood settles in your feet. <laughs> the iron settles in your feet. Huh? It runs in my family. My brother's got the same thing. 
Oh, is he a dancer? No, he's in the Navy. They're using him as an anchor. <laughs> You see, his toes spread further. All right, I don't care. <laughs> well, look, thanks very, very much for coming over, and I'm sure with feet like those, you'll go a long way. Oh, but I'm not finished yet, Mr. Benny. You haven't seen my grand finale. Oh, there's more? Oh, yes, uh, it gets tremendous applause. People stand up and cheer. Oh, well, then I gotta see this. Go ahead, then. <laughs> must have been laying off a long time because his lining only has 48 stars. <laughs> well, oh, let's get to the next contestant. Don, will you give uh, him these shoes before he scratches up the floor? <laughs> and, uh, bring out the next contestant. I'll be you? very happy. Okay. Will you come out, please? Gee, Jack, I wish you'd mention my last name because I'm not on television as often as you are. Well, they know who you are, ladies and gentlemen, Georgie Jessel. <laughs> well, Georgie, what are you doing here? You're not an amateur. I should say I'm not, but I have brought you a nephew of mine. A, a nephew? A nephew you? of mine who is a great virtuoso of the tuba. That's a musical instrument. <laughs> and this boy is just wonderful. He's young, he has that sweetness of youth. And he flings out his unafraidness into the sky of entertainment, fearing nothing, knowing no hisses, knowing only the charm of wild applause. Youth with its roseate velvet skin, youth that cancels a thousand lies. And Georgie, Georgie. Well, Jack, another way, you got a real hot kid for you. <laughs> Your nephew, has he, has he really uh, got a lot of talent? Has he got talent? Jack, if he'd have been born 50 years ago today, he could have been me. <laughs> well, you still haven't answered my question. <laughs> but uh, tell me, you mean this kid really plays, he really has talent? He plays beautifully. Now, I've been in show business long enough uh, to know what things are good. Yeah. Of course, I'm not in the show business any longer, uh, actually. As you know, I've devoted the energies of mine for the last decade to making speeches throughout the United States and yeah, all over. I understand. For various good causes. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, as I'm sure you know, I deliver a great many funeral eulogies. <laughs> and, Jack, you don't look too well. I feel fine. Well, I can't win them all. <laughs> this kid is really something. It really he is. Well, let's hear him. Uh, Bring Seymour! This is Seymour? No, this is a tuba behind it. This is. <laughs> oh, that was a rather silly question. How could I have a brass nephew? <laughs> I, want, I want you to know that this is Jack Benny, Seymour. Now, don't bow, because we'll have trouble getting you up again. Now, how long has he been playing this oh, thing? How long been playing since he was a tiny baby? A baby? Yeah, he went from the bottle to the tuba. <laughs> Seymour, I want you to play, and by the way, he's going to give you his rendition of a sleep in the deep. And I want to tell you something, Jack. He hits a low C lower than the lowest C that you ever saw. <laughs> when you see these kids? Well, go. he's handsome. I'll show him to you later. Oh. <laughs> Seymour, yeah. Seymour, now start in sleep in the deep. This is tremendous. Yeah. <laughs> He's a little nervous, I guess. Well, I can imagine, yeah. Child, you know. Yeah. Go ahead. His age, huh? <laughs> Look, Seymour, go ahead. We'll blow for... Look, <laughs> come on, Seymour. Blow for your Uncle Jack. Come on. He don't want to. I guess I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take him off and calm him down, huh? All and right. then, don't worry, Sonny. And then I'll bring him back later. Look, Seymour, I want you to know that this is the Jack Benny program. And it goes from coast to coast. There's at least a hundred people watching it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, while we're waiting for Jessel to get his nephew ready for this, he's probably nervous, I can understand that. We'll have our next contestant, John. Oh, 
Jack. This is Mr. Marv Willens and his dog, Satan. Oh, well, how do you do? How do you do, Mr. Benny? Well, what a beautiful, beautiful dog. What a big dog. I bet he could jump a mile, huh? Eh? Well, he is in pretty good shape. Really? How long have you had him? Well, he's been with me for seven years, ever since he was a puppy. No kidding. Well, it says here that we're going to see an amazing acrobatic act. Is that right? Right. Uh, what, what, what are we going to see? Well, in order of execution, you'll see a backflip, a backspring, a front spring, mm. mule kicks, a round-off backspring, backflip. Well, that should be sensational, for heaven's sakes. That's wonderful. All right, let's have it. Huh? Drum roll, please. Nothing. <laughs> well, then why did you bring him here? He's afraid to stay home alone. <laughs> well, I must say he fooled me completely. But I bet I wasn't the only one who was fooled. Now, how many of you in the audience really thought the dog was going to do something? Raise your hands. Nobody? <laughs> oh, well. Come Jack, on. we have a Jack, group coming. Jack, here Now you. what? No, oh, it's Seymour. He's all calm and fine. My sister-in-law, that's his mother. Grace is back there, and we calmed him down. He had a little nap, and he just feels dead. Okay, now. Come on, blow for your Uncle Jack. Come on, now. <laughs> Sleep in the deep. Sleep in the deep. Well, yeah, it is lower than lower than sea. I know, but why doesn't he play? Well, well just give him a minute now. All right, son. Now, look, Seymour, I brought you here to play from the Jack Benny show. This is Jack Benny. Are you going to play, Seymour? Look, honey, I'm going to count three. And if you don't blow something out of that thing, I'm going to give you such a rap in the push George, that you never George, you're not you the boy. You're making a wreck out I'm of I'm not them. making a wreck. You told me you wanted to get him on the Benny show, right? I got him on. Here he comes down. I got him a haircut, a new suit, and he doesn't want to play. That's all. I say play something. Look, George, if he doesn't want to play, he doesn't have to. Oh, he doesn't have to? What should he do? Take his shoes off and do a buck dance? Here? <laughs> play. People are watching, my friends, and this is all embarrassing to me. Look, George, if you... You shut up. <laughs> Children, you gotta be gentle. Look, Seymour, you'd make Mumsy very happy if you'd play the tuba for all these nice people. <laughs> Seymour, there's nothing to be afraid of. Just once for Mumsy. Oh. <laughs> Player, I'll jam that plumbing down your throat. Great. This is gentle. What you're doing with him? He doesn't want to play. He doesn't have to. Oh, yeah, it's a matter of principle now. But I got a show. Come on, come on, you need a little more talking to. You come to. <laughs> we shall return. <laughs> you know, I thought Jessel was wrong when he said I only had a hundred viewers. Now I think he's right. <laughs> And for those of you who are still with us, I want to say that we have a Pardon group. Pardon me. Group uh, here. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. Wait. No, wait a minute. You can't come up here from the audience. I'm going to stay in the middle of a show. I know, but you've got a lot of acts and vaudeville acts on your show, Mr. Sullivan. I want to be on it. <laughs> I'm not Ed Sullivan. And, and anyway, you can't come up on the stage in that condition. What's the matter with my condition? I'm celebrating a glorious American holiday, the 4th of July. Today isn't the 4th of July. Well, what's that guy doing up here with an American flag? I... <laughs> Stand aside, I'll show you some acrobatic tricks. We just had an acrobat up there. That dog has nothing. <laughs> Not 
Get out of my way. You're, you're not programmed. Look at Kelly, you're not programmed on this show at all. Just a minute, I know what I'm doing. Leave me alone. That dog, you can't watch the audience. Will you please? <laughs> he may be an amateur acrobat, but I know he's a professional drunk. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, this thing of the last thing I do in my I didn't expect at all. <laughs> now, I would like to present this group that came all the way from south of the border. They call themselves the Tijuana Troubadours. <laughs> now, uh, it says here that you're a group here, you come from Tijuana, is that right? <laughs> and you, uh, evidently are the spokesman for the group? Si. <laughs> that means, of course, you're their leader. Si. Now, <laughs> uh, what is your name? Si. <laughs> si? Si. <laughs> Now, it also, it says here that you're all related, that you're brothers, so evidently you must be a sister. Si. Have you been with this act a long time? Si. And what is your name? Sue. Sue? Si. Now, I imagine you being amateurs, you probably, you know, you haven't got a chance to make money, much money, so I imagine you do something else for a living, like you. Uh, uh, what do you do for a living, Sue? So. <laughs> so? Si. <laughs> What's this here? That you're gonna have to, you're gonna play a number for us, right? Si, 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 si. all right, play something. <laughs> Siempre que te pregunto que cuatro, cómo y dónde, tú siempre me respondes, quizás, quizás, quizás. Pasan los días y yo desesperado y tú contestando. I want to ask you something. You know, I've um, uh, heard this song so many times, and those words, quesas, quesas, quesas. Now, what does quesas mean? Perhaps. <laughs> quesas means perhaps? I think. You think, huh? Sí. Oh! <laughs> Si pasan los días y yo desesperado y tú no contestando, quizás, 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 quizás. Thank you very, very much, and I predict that you will be amateurs for a long, long time. <laughs> now, I want to also thank you for coming all the way here to do your act for nothing. Free? See. Si. <laughs> Just 
Jack Benny Barato. That means cheapskate. <laughs> Jack Benny Viejo Barato. That means old cheapskate. <laughs> I didn't know that that's what it meant. I got a Christmas card with that written on it. <laughs> well, now, ladies and gentlemen, that you've seen all of the acts, I'm going to bring them back on. And then I want by your applause to indicate which act you like the best. Would you come back on, please? over his head. All right, okay. check, oh. check, I got it. Oh. <laughs> all right, well, he's all but, set. George, it's too late. He's we haven't old. got, we haven't got time You'll now. You'll see what happens now. We'll kill him. And now, Sleep in the Deep, as performed by Seymour Fenevisi, my nephew. Go ahead. <laughs> now, he's trying, what's well, happened? Must be, something must be stuck, Jack. <laughs> what is he? What is this? <laughs> I almost got killed. Don't worry, I'm ready. <laughs> you join me on farewell to this great comedian. Not yet! I said almost. Okay. I got that way ahead of time. <laughs> now, now he does, I guess that's the best he can do. All right. Well, now, with this, and I just want to find out who, who got the, the first prize. Well, for this one. No, not you. Wait a minute. It was pretty close, but oh, I just think... Just a minute. Well, what about putting your hand over my nephew's head and the tuba? Well, why? You only played one note. That's right, that's right. One note isn't much entertainment. I'll make up for it. Ah, Swanee, how I love you, how I love you. We don't want oh, I can't play. ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you're all wondering why I would do a show like this, this kind of a show, you know, to give amateurs a chance. Now, I know some people think it's because I don't have to pay them. Well, that's not the only reason. <laughs> I just, I, I like to do these kind of shows. And ladies and gentlemen, may I present again my guest star, Georgie Jessup. Thank you. I know that, Jack, with your modesty, you haven't said the reason why you do these things, because Jack got his first start as an amateur. In the early 20s, he had to appear as an amateur in Chicago. When he came up to the box office with his violin case, the cashier thought it was a stick-up, gave him $2,000, and thought about the money. The money and That's not true. I only got $600. <laughs> Folks, and I'll be seeing you soon.